Welcome to a point for reflection for Thursday, the 19th of November, 2020. It has recently been announced that we are to get an extra bank holiday to mark the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. I'm sure it will be most welcome when it comes. The Queen and the whole royal family generate a huge amount of interest, but sometimes it is the more controversial side of the family that people have the most interest in. Both the TV series The Crown and the recent press reports about the investigation into the now infamous TV interview with Diana, Princess of Wales, are all dealing with issues that are well within living memory. Often the royal family is a bit of a mystery. However, many magazines they adorn the cover of and news reports or TV programmes about them, we don't really know them. It strikes me that there is an air of privilege and mystery generated about royalty. You enter into that master-servant relationship and the hierarchy of an unequal life keeps royalty aloof, separate, distant from the masses. I think that is the way it has been for thousands of years. And even within the Hebrew scriptures, there are all sorts of kings mentioned. From the tyrannical despotic king to the inept king to the puppet king, all with their queens and concubines who fear to go into the presence of their king. Interestingly, there are also the foreign kings used by God to teach a lesson to the people of God. Keeping all that in mind, it surprises me that we adopt the title King for Jesus. This coming Sunday is the last Sunday of the lectionary year, and it is usually designated as Christ the King Sunday. We then begin again with the expectancy and lowly birth of Advent and Christmas, which hardly speaks to our understanding of royalty. Even the royalty mentioned in those birth stories do not come out of it particularly well. That is Herod. We think of the visitors from the East more as magi than kings. Herod is devious, he's a liar, and generates fear as he murders boy children aged up to three years of age because of his own fear and his own desire for power. Much of the stories and some of our modern expectation seems to me to be in quite a major contrast of what a king is and how Jesus was. This is reflected in Jesus' relationships with people and his relationship with God. Jesus seems to try to debunk the myths that God is distant, remote, dictatorial or disinterested in people and their hardships and their problems. Jesus spends much of the gospel accounts trying to welcome people into the kingdom and show the marginalised how they too belong. This seems to be a very strange kind of king. But the strangest thing comes at the end of one of the gospel accounts. This is from John chapter 13. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. 
So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor the messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. So Jesus turns on their heads the expectations of the people and takes himself from any pedestal he may have been put on, gets on his knees and does the one thing no one expects him to do. He washes the feet of his disciples. This implies not only does Jesus reject the traditional ideas associated with kingship, but practices the complete opposite of those expectations. Some people have referred to the kingdom of God as the topsy-turvy kingdom where the rules do not resemble our rules and practices are quite different to the hierarchies of life that we have created. Everything Jesus does seems to scream, God is not like that, into the face of the Pharisees, the outcast, the foreigner and even to his disciples. If Jesus is a king, he is unlike any king the world has ever known, for his throne is made of wood and the pronouncements he makes is one seeking forgiveness for those who sought to kill him. And his crown is not made of gold, but is made of thorns. If Jesus is a king, what sort of king is he? If Jesus is our king, what sort of subjects are we? Do we pay lip service to the things he did, rather than follow the example he set. Loving God, we may try to hold you at arm's length, but in Jesus you show us the closeness you desire. We may put you on a pedestal, but in Jesus you show us how you serve us and meet our needs. We may declare you a mystery, but in Jesus you have revealed your nature to us. We may encase you in a language that keeps you distant, but in Jesus you become one with us. As we proclaim you, King, help us not to trap you in remote language, but walk daily in the footsteps of Jesus, allowing your love to speak, guide, encourage and build up your followers. Amen.